In this video, I'm going to reduce uh, this given matrix to row reduced echelon form. So looking at uh, that matrix, I'll start by looking at uh, what a row reduced echelon form is. For row reduced echelon form, number one, we would have the number of zeros preceding the first non-zero entry of a row increases row by row. This first uh, non-zero entry of a row, I'll call it the distinguished element. Then for the second part, we would have that the distinguished elements are each equal to one. Then the third condition is that the distinguished elements are the only non-zero entries in their respective columns. So when we have put a matrix which satisfies those three conditions, then it is said to be in row or reduced echelon form. So for this given matrix, to put it in a row reduced echelon form, we will have to use elementary row operations. That is, we can exchange any two rows, multiply any row by a constant, or add a multiple of one row to another. So we can use those three elementary row operations to reduce the matrix into row reduced echelon form. So in this case, I'll start by looking at the distinguished elements there the first non-zero entry of a row. For the first row, it's a 1. For the second row, it's a 2. For the third row, it's a 3. But using this first condition, we want the first non-zero entry of a row to increase row by row. So we need here to be a 0, here as well to be a 0, because we need the zeros to be increasing before we get to the distinguished elements. So I can start by row number 2. We need a 0 here where we have that 2. And to achieve that, we can use row number 1. Because what we see in row number 1, the corresponding part there is a 1. And when we have a 2 here, to make it a 0, what we have to do is we multiply row number 1, which is a 1 there, was it to be 1 times 2, which will give us a 2, and then subtract that from the 2, then we'll get a 0. So we would get row number 2, we transform it to row 2 minus 2 row 1. So we multiply the elements of row 1 by 2, then subtract them from row number 2 there. So I will have my matrix there. The row number 1, I am not changing it for now. So it's a 1, 2, then the minus 3, then the 0. Then for row number 2 now, we are saying it's 2 minus 2, and it gives us a 0. O minus 4, it gives us a 0. Then minus 2, minus, minus 6, it will give us a 4. Then for the last one, we are having 2 minus 0, that's just a 2. So for us still to satisfy condition number 1 there, we need a 0 here where we have the 3. But when you have the 3, to get a 0, we need to subtract a 3. So what we can do is we multiply row number 1 by a 3 because we are having a 1 here. So if we multiply it by a 3, then you get a 3. Then you subtract it from this 3, then you would have the 0. So the elementary row operation that you have to use there is row 3. We transform it to row 3 minus 3 row 1. So what you would have there is 3 minus 3, and it gives us a 0. Then you go on to 6 minus 6, and it gives us a 0. Then the next one, it will be minus 4 minus 3 times minus 3, and it gives us a 5. Then the next one, it will be 3 minus 3 times 0, so we just have a 3. So this is the matrix that we are having now, and we need to check if it satisfies the first condition there. It still does not satisfy that first condition, because we are saying for that first condition, we should have the number of zeros preceding the first non-zero entry of a row should increase row by row. If we check here, we are having a 5 here. But if we check on row number 2, there are two zeros. So for row number 3, for it to satisfy condition number 1, we should be having three zeros because the number of zeros should increase row by row. So on this part here, we should have a 0 there. So to get a 0 there, we can try to use a row number 2. Because on row number 2, we are having a 4. But here we are having a 5. So what we can do is uh, we can multiply those uh, rows by a scalar so that they have the same value. So for example, if we multiply row 2 by 5, it gives us a 20. Row 3, we multiply it by 4, we give us a 20. Then we subtract 
that uh, values the 20 minus 20 they need to give us a zero so the row operation that we have to use there is row 3 we transform it to 4 row 3 minus 5 row so get another matrix and for the first row we are not changing it the second row we are not changing it so for the third row we are saying it's row 3 we are transforming it to 4 row 3 minus 5 row so what we would have there is 4 times 0 minus 5 times 0 and it gives us a 0 then for the next one we are having 4 times 0 minus 5 times 0 it gives us a 0 for the next one we have 4 times 5 minus 5 times 4 which will give us 20 minus 20 and we'll get a 0 then for the next one we are looking at 4 times 3 which gives us a 12 and then minus 5 times 2 which gives us a 10 so what would be having there is 12 minus 10 which gives us a 2 so what we are now having there is the number of zeros preceding the first non-zero entry of a row is increasing row by row because here we don't have any zero before the distinguished element here we have two zeros before this distinguished element and here we have three zeros before this distinguished element there so it's satisfying that condition number one there so that's what we are having there we are having condition one has been satisfied so we can now go on to check condition number two the distinguished elements they should be each be equal to one for the first row is distinguished element there it's a one for the second row is distinguished elements is a four for the third row is a distinguished element is a two but we are saying the distinguished elements must each be equal to one so we need a one here and a one there so for us to get a one here what we have to do is we have to divide the four by a four but using elemental row operations we can't do it for only one element we have to do it for all the elements in that row so we transform row two to one over four row two so i would have another matrix there for now the elements in row one i'm not changing them so we have one two minus three zero then we are dividing each element in row two by the four there so we have zero divided by four it gives us a zero 0 divided by 4 it gives us a 0 4 divided by 4 it gives us a 1 and then 2 divided by 4 it gives us a 1 over 2 so we are now done for row 2 we now go on to row number 3 we are having a 2 here what we need is a 1 so when we have a 2 and we need a 1 we just divide by 2 but when you are using elemental row operations we have to divide all the elements in that row by the 2 so what we do is we transform row 3 to 1 over 2 row 3 so we are dividing each element of row 3 by 2 then we would have 0 divided by 2 it gives us a 0 0 divided by 2 it gives us a 0 0 divided by 2 it gives us a 0 2 divided by 2 it gives us a 1 so that's uh, the matrix that we are having now we are having the distinguished elements we have a 1 here a 1 here a 1 here so what you are having there is is satisfying condition number two here so if our uh, condition two has been satisfied so we have uh, that matrix there we now need to go on and check condition number three the distinguished elements are the only non-zero entries in their respective columns so if you look at this one here when you look at this column it is the only non-zero entry in this column then you go on to the next distinguished element this one here the one is it the only non-zero entry in this column here when you are looking at column number three it's not just because we are having these three here so what we need to do is we need to get a zero here on the, this position where we have a three and also when you are looking at uh, this uh, distinguished element is it the only non-zero entry in this column it's not so it's not satisfying condition number three there so let us now try to have a zero here on this minus three to have a zero we can use this one here so what we can do is when we are having a minus three and uh, we need a zero using the one what we need to do is we multiply the one by the three then add it to the minus three so what we do there is we transform row one to row one 
plus 3 times row 2. We multiply row 2 by 3 and then add it to row 1. So I'll have another matrix there. Or it will be 1 plus 3 times 0 and it gives us a 1. Then for the next one, it will be 2 plus 3 times 0 and it gives us a 2. Then for the next one, it will be minus 3 plus 3 times 1 which will give us minus 3 plus 3 and it will give us a 0. Then for the next one, it will be the 0 plus 3 times 1 over 2, which gives us 0 plus 3 over 2, which is just a 3 over 2. So that's uh, all the new row 1 there. But what you are also having there is, we were looking, if we are looking at this distinguished element, we need all the other element in the fourth column there to be 0. So we need this part here to be a zero. And for us to get a zero, when we have a one over two, we can use this one. So what we can do is we can multiply row three by a half, then subtract that from the row two. So we transform row two to row two minus a half row three. So what we'll be having there is zero minus zero gives us a zero. Zero minus zero, it gives us a zero. One minus zero, it then for the last one there, we'll be having a half minus a half times one. So it will be half minus a half, then it will give us a zero. For the third row, I can write it as it is a zero, 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 one. So that's the matrix that we are having there. And we need to check if it is a satisfying condition number three. So condition three is saying the distinguished elements are the only non-zero entries in their respective columns. So if we check this one here, it's the only non-zero entry in column number one. If we look at this one, it's the only non-zero entry in the column number three. But if you look at uh, this one here, is it the only non-zero entry in this column number four? It's not just because we are having this part here, three over two is not a zero. So we need to get this part here to be a zero. And for us to have a zero, when we have three over two, we can use this one. So what we can do is we multiply row three by three over two. Then we subtract that from row one. So that would have three over two minus three over two, which would then give us a zero. So the elemental row operation that we have to use there, we transform row one to row one minus three over two or row three. So when you do that, we would get another matrix. So I'll write down that matrix there. So we are saying row one, we are transforming it to row one minus three over two row three. So we'll be having one minus zero, it gives us a one. Two minus zero, it gives us a two. Zero minus zero, it gives us a zero. Then for the three over two, we are saying is three over two minus three over two times the one, which gives us three over two minus three over two, which gives us a zero. And then for the second row is not changing, 0, 0, 1, 0. The third row not changing, 0, 0, 0, 1. So what we are having is uh, that matrix there, which has 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's the matrix that we are having. Now check if it is satisfying condition number three. We look at the distinguished element there, it's a 1. And it's the only non zero entry in this column here. The next distinguished element, it's a one, and it is the only non zero entry in this column here. And the next distinguished element, it's a one, and it's the only non zero entry in this column here. So, what you are having there is condition number three has been satisfied. So, what you are having there is all this three conditions have been satisfied. So what we are having there is this matrix now has been reduced to raw reduced echelon form.